You're the puppet nerds of the world This may sound absurd But this is the place you need to be We'll do an interview And then we'll stitch and glue All of the dolls will make it shake If you wanna be in the know When to play like a pro Subscribe to Kruttinger Puppets Adam Krutinger here, and I wanted to take you through a really cool client build that I did recently. I built the salmon puppet, and I'm really happy with how it came out. Now I'm going to walk you through the whole process. Now anytime I'm starting a new build, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll do a clay sculpture first. Now with the case of this puppet, I only sculpted half of it. Sometimes I do the whole thing, but I usually only pattern half of it anyway. So with more intricate sculpts like this, uh, I only do half. I did this with my figment puppet as well. If you watched that, you can click the link right up here if you want to see that video too. Now, if you've been watching my channel for a while, you know this masking tape technique. I use it with almost all of my puppets. And then I scaled it up and then started cutting it out of foam. One thing I did a little different on this build is I laminated the foam first. I like to put a lining in my puppet, but sometimes it can be kind of hard to wrestle it in there. This is kind of pre-lining the foam. That way, once I put the puppet together, the lining's already set in perfectly. Now I'm just gluing it all together with contact cement. My favorite that I like to use is called Master's Contact Cement. But I know a lot of puppet builders use barge as well. So I'm just lining up all the registration marks and it's coming together pretty nicely. And for my mouth plates, I like to use recycled plastic. Right here, I'm cutting it out of an old storage bin. Then I just give it a light sand and then put on some finger loops. That'll give me a much better grip for performing this puppet. For the fins, I used craft foam. This is quarter inch thick craft foam. And then what I did is I covered it with fabric on both sides with the spray adhesive. That makes it much tougher. To add some of the details onto the fins, I used a hot knife to kind of melt the fleece. Really happy with how this turned out. Make sure you do this in a well-ventilated area, though. It does create fumes. Now, this is the pattern-making process for the fleece covering. It's called draping. What I do is I take a very similar fleece to the fleece I'm going to be using for the final puppet and I kind of lay it over the puppet and kind of make sure that I draw in all the seam lines where it's going to go. I put in any darts where I'll need them and then trace it on the paper so I have a perfect pattern. This is a special insulation foam tubing that I use for the lips. You can find this at a local hardware store. Now I'm gluing the fins in. One thing I made sure to do before I glued them in is I actually cut away the fabric right around the bottom edge of where I'm actually attaching the fins to the foam. That way I get a much more secure bond. Now I'm cutting out and stitching together the fabric body. All right, now let's see how it fits.
Here I'm gluing down the fabric to underneath the lip. I'm using a little X-Acto blade to be able to push it in as deep into the valley as I can. That'll completely hide the seams under the lip. And then this is the pattern making process for covering the lips as well. There we go, now I'm stitching the lips together. One thing I'm doing a little differently is I'm gonna set the mouth plate fabric into just the lips. Now when I glue that in and turn it, it'll do the inside of the mouth and wrap the lips all in one piece. Then I'm using that same technique to tuck in the lip fabric into the puppet. Here I'm stitching the fins together. I'm using a headliner foam for the inside of the fins. That gives them a nice amount of flexibility and, you know, perfect for flapping fins of a fish. And rather than stitching the edges together, I used a little bit of glue. That kind of gives it a nice little point, almost like a fin really is. And then I started stitching them all on. Now this was a really exciting and nerve wracking part to do all the airbrushing for this. It's not that often that I use airbrushing on a puppet, but the scary thing about it is you kind of do it when the puppet's done. So it's really something that's gonna make or break it. In this case, I think it worked out really well for this character. I'm so excited and glad that I took the chance on doing it. And then I stitched the gills on and started making the eyes. I have a ton of videos on making puppet eyes and actually probably about three or four more than I'm planning to. So stay tuned, there's a lot more puppet building coming down the pipe. Since this puppet is going to be used in a professional film scenario, I added rod pockets instead of some of my other uh, arm rod techniques. So that way they'd be easily removable. At this point I thought I was done, but the client decided they wanted to add some pink to the side to give it more of a salmon look. And here's how it all turned out. This was an especially fun build because it's not a design that I get to do that often. One of the things that's interesting about this design is that the whole puppet is pretty much one big piece. Most puppets have a body and a head and a neck that connects them. And a fish is pretty much a torso with a face. And for this project, I actually had to build four fish. And they were all based off of the same pattern, but I made small changes to make them unique characters. And I'm really happy with how they came out too. I also made another short video that shows how these puppets kind of work. Click right here if you want to see a simple video I made for the client. If you enjoy puppetry or just making things in general, make sure to subscribe. I have weekly videos that teach puppetry and puppet building. Don't forget to check out the podcast too. And I have a ton of free resources on my website. All the links are in the description. Well, that's it for now. I'll see you next time.